some more Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020, and today it is our third season, and it is our first season with the Missouri Tigers. So here we are in the heart of March Madness. Um, I'm sure your bracket's in shambles, probably already in the trash can. You know, you had Illinois, you had Iowa, you had whoever, they're all out. Uh, but come check out your boy cards, and let's see what we can do with these Missouri Tigers. I actually have, I don't want to call it high hopes. I have hopes that this team isn't miserable, uh, mostly because of this senior point guard. I guess I should actually check the office. They want me in the NCAA tournament, top half of the conference, finish above 500, and improve school prestige. So, without having seen this team yet, I don't really know, I don't really know if that'll work out. Um... We'll, we'll see. Let's, let's see here. So it looks like they're running high post and shuffle. I'm cool with that. We probably need to get them off of this triangle. But the high post and shuffle is cool. Uh, let's just do 60-40. Balanced running. Uh, 80 is a little bit much for... For my taste, especially with this roster, there's really only about five, six players that are really good on all these. Uh, let's back it down to like 65. We'll keep it balanced. Defensively. All right, so they can run. A couple of them are real good at man. Most of them are pretty good at that. And then a 1-2-2 two, two zone. And you know what I'm going to try out here is I'm going to try a little bit of a 1-2-2 two, two zone, I think. We're going to come off the man. We're going to switch to a 1-2-2 two, two zone. So let's run man like 10% of the time. 1-2-2 two, two zone the other 900% of the time. No, we'll run zone the other 90% of the time. Uh, and this just to mix it up a little bit. You know, I think a lot of teams really focus on a couple of offensive sets. And they don't necessarily put enough time into practicing against zone sets. Especially, yeah, we got a stream beverage here, uh, Vader. We got... I've got the last of a six-pack of a Founders Porter, and then uh, over here, waiting in the wings, we got a Duclaw, 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 Sweet Baby Jesus. So yeah, we got a couple streamer beverages set up, ready to go, ready to get us through the night. Uh, that's why, that's why we got to set up the strategy now, because later on it's just going to be all hype, right? But yeah, I don't, I don't think everybody practices enough against a one-two-two zone. So we're going to implement that, run it, see what we can get done there. So that's our strategy, high post shuffle and then one two two zone with a little bit of man mixed in you always want to be able to bring the man if you need to ratchet up the pressure right uh, but we're only going to practice at about five percent bounce that one two two up to 20 uh, cut the triangle out completely give us that time back gonna drop let's see here i actually like that oh they're running this press way too much um i can i can back that down to 10 I'll back it down further. We can go, I like 10% across the board here because that's going to get me up and up and running against these zones sooner. Got the bourbon ready for the CBGM visits. Man, uh, if I can get some bourbon, if I can get away with some bourbon on a Friday night, that'd be nice. How about them beavers? Uh, seems like a glitch in the matrix to me. I've already sent in a complaint to the NCAA about uh, just basically how unrealistic their product is. So... Don't worry, they'll be hearing from me real soon. Uh, I'm trying to think if I want to mix this press in a little bit. And I actually think that I do. I actually think that I do. 2-2-1 two, two, press, okay. Let's make sure they're... Alright, so that's the only press that they're going to run. And then I'm going to come over here. Yeah, I've got the full court defense cranked up a little bit. So we definitely want to leave that uh, full court press coaching up there at at least 10%. Uh, and the rest of this is probably going to be all right. Good mix of youth and vets. A little bit of a deeper bench. A little, play a little bit faster. Uh, we're going to crash the boards. We're going to be intense on defense. It might be a zone, but there's nothing wrong with being intense in your zone. Uh, you're going to get some more fouls, but you're going to get some more steals. That's perfect. I like everything else that we're doing here. The only thing, obviously, that needs to change is we need to crank that. But our strategy page is going to dictate how often we run zone defense, not necessarily the slider. I just I just like to keep it looking consistent. 
Uh, but so our strategy is set, our philosophies, our practice time, all that is set. We do need to double check coach assignments since we're at a new school. Oh, we got a real nice recruiter here in Cornell, man. 82. I think I I think I looked at this last stream possibly. He looks good over there. Uh, obviously this is flip flopped. He needs to be practiced. He needs to be scout. Save those changes. Make sure I saved my changes to practice plan, which is hidden right now. And I did not, which is why you always have to double check. Sometimes um, I am not the brightest. <laughs> All right, we're backing this down to five, taking this up to 20, 10, and that gives us 10 across the board over here. And now we do the pro move and hit the save button. And now we're up and running practice set, strategy set. It's June 26. It's time to go out and bring some players into this Missouri program. So let's go and see. I actually took a sneak peek at this last time before I, after I let you guys go, before I left. And uh, it, I got to tell you, it's a welcome change. Here is the full recruit list for all positions in the Great Plains region, which is Missouri's home region. Look at all the four-star interest. Right away, it's so – I love Bellarmine. It's a great little Louisville school. Uh, I think they're going to have a great year here. I think uh, the center that we recruited for them is probably going to be that conference's player of the year. Uh, it's probably going to be that conference's freshman player of the year. And he's probably going to be an all-conference player sooner rather than later. I don't know if he'll be – all conference right away but he's going to carry them bellerman's going to be very good for a couple of years while my players run through that program but we've got some nice looking recruits that already have interest here in us at missouri uh, so we're going to definitely push hard on that all right scholarship wise we got three scholarships uh, and we know we just need players across the board right so we can take a quick look here at the roster oh sometimes this likes to be a little bit of a pain but you just choose one of these two options and it pops right in just like it should so you can see the players i mean gerald gerald floyd the senior point guard is by far the best player he's gonna be gone this walk-on shooting guard he's going to be gone an okay sophomore a senior that's going to be gone junior so we do have a power forward coming back this may be the one position is it, look we got a couple of nice scores here too aaron smith and gerald floyd both good scores, uh, both pretty good defenders. So this Smith and Floyd are definitely the type of players that we want on the team. We want 13 of those guys, though. Uh, and then this junior walk-on, you know, not great. So basically, we desperately need a starter at every position except for power forward. And we've only got three scholarships. So we're just bringing in best available, and I'll do it like always. 10 across the board at each position, and hopefully we pull off some of the top ones at each one. Mm. One thing, though, we are going to open this up to all regions, because I believe... Let's see if I didn't... Did I get any information on anybody other than Great Plains? Because if not, I'll go back. I was thinking... Sometimes, depending on budget, I'll go like home region and one other region. So like Great Plains and Southeast. But I mean, Southeast, I clearly didn't do that. Um, Midwest, I clearly didn't do that. And West, I didn't get. So we are going to stick to Great Plains for now. I, I think that, uh, no, we don't want the report, right? Always be careful when you're, when you're sorting here. If you view by this Gold Star report, you're going to get different information than if you view by region. Yeah, Stanley, we finished up our second season there at Bellarmine, and we got offered a job at Missouri. We also got offered uh, another one that we considered pretty heavily, and it's evading me right now. Who, who was the other team that we were looking at? This was in the SEC. Oh, we looked uh, pretty hard at the Miami Hurricanes. We almost went to Miami. Uh, but we're going to stick. Uh, I didn't want to go into the ACC and play Louisville every year. Uh, Missouri has been a team that I've kind of wanted to stream for a while. Uh, I've enjoyed I enjoyed playing with them in a little bit of a solo save, so excuse me there. Uh, all right, now here's an interesting situation. Yeah, this is our third stream. So here's Stanley. So uh, third stream on College Basketball 21. 
So here's the interesting situation that we have. I always like to have an upper class point guard that's good. And obviously our point guard is going to be leaving. This is one of the very few times coming into a new program where I don't have any kind of point guard. One of the very few times that I am actually somewhat interested in, uh, in a Juco. Couldn't wait to get out of Louisville. Uh, couldn't wait to get some better recruits with a little bit of interest. So, whereas in that one, we were begging to get, you know, guys in the 150s, 200s. Now we got top 50 players that are just straight out interested. So, yeah, we're going to see. I'm trying to decide whether I want to try and pursue these guys that are in region with no interest. Obviously not him. His GPA is a killer. Uh, we will go ahead and throw Jennings on our list. We're going to throw this Juco on the list. The GPA here doesn't matter. He'll still qualify. We might have to watch him once he gets in. But ju junior college players will always qualify at your school. You do not have to worry about that. So same thing here. We'll go ahead and bring in the Juco. All right, that's nine. And we can we don't have to go to ten. If any of these guys down here at the bottom actually show up and have a decent camp, we'll come back and grab them later. And, you know, I would – honestly, I would take a JUCO at any position uh, for this year specifically. Coming out of Texas, you know what? I got dreams of getting a pipeline into Texas. Look at the kind of talent they put out. We're going to throw all those guys on our list and see what we can do. But we got a four-star small forward top 50 in Missouri. So that's obviously uh, an interesting one. Uh, this 2-2 we're going to skip. I don't trust him to qualify. All right, power forward's not an absolute position to need, but if we get a stud there and we can bring somebody in, I'll do it. And look at all the interest that we've got here. Uh, Stanley, I don't touch junior college players if I don't have to. Um, they're coming in with less than four years of eligibility, and they probably are not going to know my offenses and defenses, and they're almost never going to be like that five-star elite one-and-done type of player. So... They're going to be around for a couple of years. I might as well take a guy that I can have for four years, teach him my offense and defense, rather than... Uh, now, here I'm not interested in a Juco because I have the power forward already. So, you know, if I'm going to bring a, an older guy, you know, he's going to be... They're going to be more, more developed, right? Uh, so if I need him straight away to start, yeah, I'll grab him. But I, I don't, I'm not looking for a starter at power forward. I'm looking for a starter at every other position for next year. So that's why we're going to leave him off. 2.1 with cool interest before I've ever started trying to recruit him. He's going to qualify. He'll be fine. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do my best to remember not to take him off the list and come back and show that to you guys. And, and prove it to me because it's still just a theory that those guys are always going to qualify. I could certainly be proven wrong, and it would not surprise me in the least. Ooh, we're a little bit light on centers here. Okay. Uh, hopefully somebody shows up at the camp, but we're going to roll with this list. We added every three-star and up player that was interested and a couple of four and fives that weren't. And we'll go ahead and just start off hosting the centers. It doesn't particularly matter. We're going to eventually get around to bringing in all these guys. can't remember how high my coaching recruiting level is. How much I'm going to get hung up on here. Well, that one went well. Sometimes they they go back and forth. Uh, I think, do we have some really good... Oh, yeah, this point guard. I would need to talk him into it. Then we've got the Juco, so let's go ahead and call him up. Come on, man. All right. That's enough for a first week. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you getting the word out. A couple of them came around probably through uh follows on twitch or i don't know if our discord thing does the discord announce when i go live i'm not certain um i should have posted it in there honestly but i know like i don't have a big twitter following or anything so i don't bother with that
All right, a couple cool visits. I like it. We'll run these camps and see what we get. Right, so we went to Georgia, which is great. I couldn't remember exactly, but I'm really glad I did that because these players at Georgia are going to be under-recruited. They're going to be perfect targets for starting out at one of these middle. You got a mail from Twitch. That's awesome. Uh, they're going to be perfect targets to start out at this kind of middle-of-the-road prestige type of team because they'll have interest. Um, and they're talented. Let's go ahead and get through Vegas, and then we're going to pop over and see. You know, I, I didn't get any kind of Western reports or anything like that. Uh, let's see. First of all, at the national camps, it doesn't look like – so that's southeast, southeast, west, west, and Atlantic East. So nobody in the Great Plains region uh, hit the top five of the Indy Elite. And since I didn't go to this camp, I won't get those notes on any of these other players. All I, all I can see is the top five. Damn, this is all America East and West. <laughs> it's all North Carolina, New Jersey. Look at California. Yikes. Would have been a good year. You know, I've done, a, I've done some saves at Cal uh, and at UCLA, but be a fun year to... Look at that, my boy from Louisville, Kentucky, Jim Felix. MVP of Georgia. Got a guy from Oklahoma. What is Emmy? Is that Maine? But Matt Smith from Enid, Enid, Oklahoma. Is he on our list? He certainly is. Top five at Georgia. All right, so Matt Smith, right out of the gate. Very high up on my list. So decent. Top 25. So see, these are the guys. Like We bring these guys in. They're going to be a, a great baseline. Um to kick this thing off and make sure we hopefully don't get fired. Uh, but definitely Matt Smith is the number one target. So top 25. I'm not sure if any of the rest of these weems. Right, so most of these guys are more like decent or didn't stand out. All right, so Matt Smith in the top five. Shh, I did not mean to click him again. So those couple of guys up toward the top, looks like we got a couple of guards that were all in the top 25. Uh, big men-wise, Matt Smith looks like probably the best bet. So we definitely want to make sure and bring him in for a visit right now. Well, look at that. I mean, Three-star player in the top 250 in the country. Come on in, big man. What else do we have on him? No other information yet. All right. Got hung up on pretty quick there. Let's just text him. Maybe he's a texting kind of guy. No? Location, conference prestige, got to go. All right, he gave us a little bit. I'm tired of clicking that button now. Uh, we're also going to scout him live. Now, let's jump over and take a look here. Point guards. Tremendous work ethic. Love to see that. Here's the top 25 and Toby Collins. So, And this is the great thing about using this screen now. I can just host him from here, scout him live from here. Let me try to text him a little bit until he hangs up on me. Good to go. All right, so we got some information on on Toby. Who else? Alvin Hill didn't stand out. Frank Walker's in the top 25, so there's another host. There's another scout him live. Uh, we will watch some film on these point guards. And, you know, people asked about talent or or balance. Yeah, random task. It'd be a long stream, man. Um, usually these... I'm going to try for a full season stream. So usually these take about two hours. And I'd say I've only been up maybe 30 minutes tops. Uh, so we got a ways to go here. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, somebody was asking me about, you know, talent versus 
roster needs and that sort of thing i'm always going to go talent especially taking over if i happen to get two point guards i'll just start both of them and deal with it no problem i don't want to bring in duds like i need guys that can go in score points win games right out of the gate and get this program trending in the right direction all right let's see how our inbox looks frank walker did not care for the visit so that sucks toby liked it and matt smith didn't like it oh that's killer that was the first guy we wanted Mm. All right, so let's see. How did Houston go? There's Javon Jennings, one of the guys that we're going after. He was in the top five. A couple of guys, out, Mike O's and Josh Detmer, both out of Missouri. So they've just sprung to the front of the list. All right, let's check you out, Mike He's big into location, baby. Big into location. Ah, uh, I already got the visits out. Oh, he already visited. He visited in the first week. That's right. He visited in the first week. He thought it was all right. You know, cool, but not great. Uh, we're going to go ahead and offer him. He's top five in region. He's an offer 100%. He's in state. His priority is location. There's just no way around it. This is one of, this is our main target as of right now. All right power forward so matt smith went to none he's still really low though he's in region and i'm not kicking him off the list yet uh, we could always make an in-home visit and push it if we really need to but let's see how did he do so he was top 10 at houston So we got a couple of guys that were decent there. Matt Smith is the only real big player there. So power forward wise, remember that is the one position that we're set at and uh, our, um, our main target has not shown any interest. So let's back away from that for right now. Let's jump over, make sure that we're hosting and, oh, hold on. I can scout live this week. I need to get that scout live on O's. All right, now Detmer is getting hosted and Scout Live. Give him a call to see what we can unlock. We think about location, man. Yeah, big factor. Love to hear that. The home state guy, the hometown kid is really, really big. In the location. Come on. All right, we're in this top three. I didn't even look at the list. Jumping college and leaving them? What are you talking about? That's the first time I moved this season. Bellarmine was always going to be a short stay. Missouri's going to get some love here. We're going to turn Missouri into a powerhouse. All right, so he's huge into facilities, but he's also pretty into location. So uh, he's going to come in for the visit. Hopefully he enjoys it, and we go from cool to warm or maybe even hot. Uh, guy can dream, right? Okay, so now let's get back over here to point guard. We know Javon Jennings is good. He was top five at Houston. So we'll host and scout live on him. He's hot on Texas, though. He's from Iowa. So we've got catching up to do here, clearly. So let's check out our other options. First of all, let's go outside of the JUCO. So Joseph and Johnson. Uh, Raheem was a top 10 player. Toby was top 25. Frank's top 25. Alright, so Raheem Flanagan is probably our next option after Javon Jennings. So let's get him hosted. We are out of time. Okay. So we will move on along. Glad to have you in here, Breeze, though. I didn't get my... What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. Didn't get that in yet. So there we go. Javon Jennings went straight to cool. That's a good thing. It means he didn't tell us to go away. Flanagan liked it. Jennings appreciated it. Detmer enjoyed it. So we didn't do so hot with the guy that did well in Georgia. All the rest of these guys are okay with us. I mean, 
Jennings, we're probably still not landing. It looks like Texas is way out in front right now. We're not going to kick him out of the boat, but... Um, see, we didn't get to warm on him either. Ugh. We need to increase this interest level on some more. Okay, so Detmer is warm. That's a good thing. So we're within striking distance on Detmer for certain. Rest of these guys, we haven't really made a whole lot of um, we haven't made a whole lot of inroads just yet. So this is a dead period, isn't it? Yeah, we're skipping that. All right, so we're gonna host. All right, Terry Payton was easily in the top five at Houston. We will host some of those uh, Texas players. Another top five at Houston. Host. All right, now the scouting live is obviously going to Detmer, O's, and Jennings. Let's call or text. Let's text Jennings. See what all he's interested in. Get some of this unlocked, right? Come on, buddy. Talk to me. What do you want to hear about? We are here to talk about what you want to talk about, Javon. He's actually into coach discipline, which probably helps me out a little bit. All right. So yeah, coach discipline, I think we could totally pitch that. I usually go for like the not all the way up, but the very like next level of that. Just because one, it helps me with recruiting, and two, like I don't mind being strict, putting people on suspension and whatnot. Uh, I don't want to have to do it all the time, so I don't go turn it all the way up. But uh, I don't mind doing that every now and then, particularly for an instance like this. So we'll see. I mean, if we could land... If we land all the guys that we end up targeting here, we're going to be in really, really good shape. But we're on brutal recruiting difficulty, so that likely will not happen. Oh, we're on a summer camp. we got to get some visits. Now we'll get it. Now we're processing. There goes the first streamer beverage. The founders are officially tapped out. Giving up, tagging in to Claw. See what we can get going there. Let's check out these emails. So there's Memphis. We don't need that. Trey Fisher, Peyton. Oh, Derek Young did not care for the visit. He's one of the Texas guys that did so well, right? Little interest facilities. All right, I don't have a... Oh, right, the five-star guy. All right, well, we're out on him, and to be honest, we can go ahead and pull him off the list because uh, he's not one of the ones I wanted to show you on GPA. So Derek Young's out of here. Moving on. Our program will survive without you. Uh, let's just burn through some hosting. I want to get through another couple of weeks and see what some of these lists look like, see what kind of interest we generate passively through the calls, through the assistant coach, and then identify who else we send out uh, scholarship offers to. We might actually wait until August 21st, I believe. There we go. Now we're seeing Andre Booth popped up to warm. That's a good thing. Uh, except for he didn't stand out at Houston. Which basically means I don't even want him. <laughs> Just assume remove him from the list too. Uh, but he is a two three, so he's we're gonna keep him around as uh, the SAT GPA thing, uh, a test subject, if you will. Shepard, of course, Andre Booth had an awesome time. Gerald Floyd nominated for the Norton. How how busy. The 17th player in the country. Woo! We might be good. We might be good. We got a, the point guard being up there is what I like to see. How cool would it be to see what's-his-face from uh, Bellerman on here? 
I didn't think it would happen, but it would have been amazing. All right, let's keep it rocking with the in-home visits as we push forward, try to get those updated lists. We're just offering any high schooler. Like, I've got the JUCOs around as backup options right now. Uh, I'm not I'm not too awfully concerned about them. There we go. Now we're starting to get some more guys. Yearwood. He's decent. Not spectacular. Okay. Okay. I and mean, that's just the visits and they're having good visits, so Martin Moore didn't stand out. That's not cool. So we're trying to get as, as many visits through the door and as much feedback as we can just to see, um, you know, what are our options? Who, who's a realistic target? There's Scott Dobbins. He must have had an amazing visit. So he was decent at Houston and not a hard worker. <laughs> of course. Of course. Why wouldn't that be the case? So, you know, there's, it, it cuts both ways here. The nice thing is we do have a lot of interest, and these are all from my, these guys that are, like, decent, not spectacular, they're totally, they're totally fine. They're still probably top 50 prospects in this region, right? Uh, so they're okay to, to build depth and that sort of thing. Uh, the only issue is we need starters, so we can bring in these guys, but that would be, uh, it, it wouldn't rebuild quite as fast as I would hope to. All right, so first of all, Detmer. And you can see August 21st, the list did update. Uh, so there's four schools up at hot, but we are still on the list. We're warm. He's a hardworking kid. He was MVP at Houston. This guy is a huge target for us. Definitely need to offer a scholarship there. And I want to check out my office and see what my recruiting ability is, because I do not recall. All right, so I'm only at 62. So it's going to be a couple of years before my in-home visits are just like, boom, killer. But uh, we're still, we got to walk into that living room and, and make that pitch, right? You can't ignore the MVP being into you like that. All right, so a lot of awesome visits through there. That's all good. Dobbins is a small forward, so... If we miss on Detmer Dobbins 100%, I mean, that, that's a guy you can live with. I mean, he, he's not a hard worker. Okay. He, he's still going to be, he's still going to get us there eventually, just not quickly, right? Uh, let's see here. Now, see, this is what you've absolutely got to learn. And here is the difference between the 2020 version of the game versus 2021, um, especially on brutal recruiting. Like Javon Jennings, he, he had an okay visit. He didn't tell us to go away. Like, we've got cool interest, right? But here's three teams at hot, three more teams at warm, and then you get down to cool, and we're still not even on the list. Like, he has some interest in us, but he's not going to commit here. He's got all these other options that he prefers. So this is where you've just got to – you have to learn to walk away from these guys in this year's version of the game. We need to move on down, check out Raheem Flanagan. Again, a guy that we'd really like to have. He was top 10 at Houston. And he does have us in his top 10. We are cool. Um, I mean, that if we don't have any other options at point guard or shooting guard, Flanagan might be worth an in-home visit. So I mean, we only have three scholarships to offer. Flanagan might be our fourth visit. But let's keep going here. Now, Booth has interest, but he didn't stand out, so we're not really interested there. Martin Moore also did not stand out. You know, I'm looking for guys that uh, have good, that are going to be uh, good prospects for us and good players for us first, and then seeing if they have interest. So here we go. Top 25 at Houston. Warm interest. A couple of hot ahead of us. But Tremaine Allen is definitely a good target for us. He was decent, not spectacular at Georgia. I would mildly, mildly rather have a point guard. But I don't really know that we have... Oh, right, Toby Collins. How'd he do? 
He was top 25 at Houston. But see, he visited. He's still cool on us, whereas with um, with Allen, he's top 25. And we're up toward the top of his list and we're warm. So, yeah, we're going to be interested in this. Yeah, absolutely, Beardtown. Thanks, buddy. Uh, glad that you enjoyed the top 10 video. And here we are trying to put it into play. Uh, that's why I was just now saying I would definitely rather have the point guard. But, um, you know, all things being equal, I'd rather the player come to my school than not come to my school. Like, targeting a position of need or whatever, that's that's wonderful. But if they don't commit, it's kind of worthless. So, uh, if I could, if I had an equal chance of landing both these guys, I would offer the point guard. But I don't. I've got a better chance of landing Tremaine Allen. So, that's where our third offer is going. Now, we will continue to host we have any other missouri targets that we really need to it, it, when oh okay hold on now see here's it, it's a oh wait windland was decent not spectacular that's not the one i wanted who was the point guard i wanted collins and he did visit okay never mind i was gonna say if i haven't brought him in for a visit then that's on me oh southeast houston that does sound like a, a small school what conference are they in While we wait for Beardtown to answer, we're going to call up Mr. Allen and unlock some of these pitch, uh, pitch areas. If we can, please tell me if you want facilities. Thank you. A lot of times out of my peripheral, it looks like chat is moving and it's not. So if I'm looking down a lot, I do apologize. All right, that's August 21st. Let's move on. We're getting close to in-homes, guys. Martin Moore's moved up to hot. Didn't stand out at Houston. I need you guys. If you're going to be interested in me, make me interested in you. All right, let's check here. Our offer. Here, I didn't even really look with O's. And we're not toward the top of the list, but we are warm. Uh, and there's only a couple of hot. We're within striking distance here. I'm not going to worry too much. I mean, there's no guarantee that we land him, certainly. We could lose on all of these players. Um, but we're going to give it a go, for sure. And we've got everything unlocked there. So our three offers. Oh, Division Three! Yikes. Okay. Uh, we got three offers out. We've got all the information unlocked. All we need to be doing is hosting players. Because we could very easily... Uh, you know, it's doubtful we're landing all of these guys, so we need to have backup options. You know, not that I call them backup options to their face, but <laughs> let's get real. These are, there's a handful of backup options out here. These guys that are like decent, but not spectacular and can't. Uh, very much secondary options. All right, one more week before we hit the in-homes. There we go. All right, let's all uh, start crossing fingers and crossing toes and getting ready. Missouri Tigers recruiting year one. Let's see what's good. Let's see it. We didn't lose anybody before. Like, all of our recruits are going to at least let us in the living room. Sometimes they commit and don't even let you step foot in the living room, and that's really, really frustrating. But here we go. Now, I did say we were going to make Raheem Flanagan. Oh, I should have unlocked uh, Flanagan. But I can do it now. Dial him up. I think that was everything. All right, so Flanagan, he's big into location from North Dakota. But we'll give him the location pitch. Tell the man what he wants to hear. Josh Detmer, Missouri boy, down with location, also down with facilities. Tell the man what he wants to hear. We got beautiful facilities at, at Missouri. We really do. Uh, Mr. O's, huge into location, 
hometown guy. What else are you going to talk about? Mike, come play your college basketball right here at home. Baby, it's what you're interested in. It's what you want to hear about, right? Location, location. It's all about it. How aggressive am I in recruiting during the season? Depends on how good my recruiting goes here. Uh, for the most part, you're going to get most of the commits here early. Uh, if you don't, I've found that the next couple of weeks after the contact period is another nice uh it, it, it kind of stays hot and heavy. You know, you'll have guys trickling in there as far as commitments. And then past that, I, I kind of get passive on it until, um, I mean, there, and there's not much you can do uh, except for keep people on the call list and make sure you're not running out of time. And then in the, I think, first week of conference, well, the, the week of conference tournaments, uh, you get uh, you get another contact period. And so I'll try to make up any last commitments there. If I don't land anybody by that point, there's so many good prospects gone. Usually I'll just save the scholarships for the next year. No, you don't need a point guard every summer, Breeze. You always want, you, if possible, you always want a point guard waiting in the wings. Like You want a guy that's going to be able to come in and has already been in the program for a couple of years and knows the offense and defense and can run it well. Unless you're landing one of those guys that is like the top, you know, top five, top ten players in the nation, top five point guards in the nation, those guys may not know the offense, but you can bring them in, plug and play. They're going to be so talented, it's not going to matter much. If you're the type of school that's bringing in those players, run a simpler offense. Don't be trying to run them, run them in the Princeton. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I prefer to always have a junior or senior be my point guard. Uh, when feasible. So we've got three decisions here, and I always like to tease it out as long as I can. My gut says we landed one of these guys, maybe two if we got lucky. I have the most faith that we landed Josh Detmer. Tremaine Allen, I love this hope to be with you on the court next season note, because I get it often f from players who commit to other schools. It's a good note to have, but it's also, it can be a little bit of a, it can throw you off. Also, Detmer actually said, we're in the running, but he's not sure. Tremaine Allen gave us the best feedback, but they all made decisions. So here we go, baby. Tremaine Allen. Here he comes. Here we go. And that's why I targeted him over the point guard. Uh, very well, that could be our only commitment. If these guys come, we're going to get real, real serious real quick. Uh, but it, it's fairly unlikely. So Mike O's, baby, yes, sir. We got a big man and we got a guard. We're cooking. We're cooking. Josh Detmer, the one I said I thought we were most likely to get, he's going to Iowa State. What a bummer. What a bummer. That would have been huge. But my mind is immediately going to small forward is where we had the best backup option, I believe, in Scott Dobbins. I think it was Scott Dobbins, right? Let's take a let's take a stroll here through our small forwards who are still available. All right, so here we go. Let's see. Oh, so Dobbins was decent, not spectacular. Never mind. Trey Fisher doesn't have much interest in us. Nor does Peyton. Mouton was only decent at Houston. Now we get Dobbins. We're actually number one. He was also only decent. Um, all right, so LaRue Robertson was actually in the top 25, and we're warm for him. He's really into playing time, which we could give him. All right, so that's this is probably our offer, but let's... Oh, no, here's our offer. He's a top 10 player at Houston, and we're warm, so we're definitely within striking distance for Haywood. Reed didn't stand out. All right, so Haywood, Robertson are both great ones. Yeah, O's is going to be real nice. Detmer would have been real nice. We didn't land him. We've got a couple of other good options here in Haywood especially, but also Robertson. So let's get some information unlocked from these guys, starting with Haywood. 
We really need to know what he thinks about location. Let's see if maybe he might have told us that was his number one and we can just roll with it. Plane time is going to be very important to him. So that is high enough. I'm perfectly happy to visit him and talk about plane time. With LaRue Robertson, actually same thing. Plane time is very high. We're going to visit him and talk about it. Good to go there. Trey Fisher was top five at Houston. We can at least visit him and talk location. I'm not too worried about it. I don't think we have a real chance at him. We do need to offer the scholarship to Haywood. And um, let's see here. Look at that. Raheem Flanagan. We went to number one on Raheem Flanagan's list. Hold on now. He was a top ten. Oh, man. Dang. We went straight to number one on his list. We could grab a point guard. So we could grab two point guards instead of a small forward had I not just made that offer. Huh. Both of them were top ten at Houston. I mean, Haywood's got us at number seven. I would love to land Raheem Flanagan. All right, I'm actually going to do something really stupid. Just, just really stupid. I'm going to revoke that from Haywood, which is basically, like, game over. We're not getting Haywood. Once you... Were, once you revoke a scholarship from somebody, they're never going to come. But with us being number one here, like, he's telling us we're his number one, and we hadn't even offered. So now that we've offered, let's cross our fingers. We can land our point guard of the future. And, again, I'm doing this because I do covet the point guard position. If this were flip-flopped, I would have 100% left the offer on the point guard and not gone for the small forward. So here we could land a, a, a point guard that I really covet. Um, we got the visit in. He's been offered. Let's go get our scheduling done. We do need to see. Oh, yeah, we got some nice games coming up here, baby. A lot of home games against some nonsense teams. So this is a nice, easy adjustment into Missouri, right? We got a nice, easy schedule. They only need us to win 15 games. We've got a point guard that's already on the Norton list. Oh, uh, I got good news for you. You might not see it yet, but I'm on all available. That means any players that have disappeared are no longer available. And uh, our boy Raheem is no longer available, but I don't have any scholarships available. So guess what that means? Your boy is a tiger. He thought the visit went well. We impressed him. And he's chosen our school. There we go. Oh, baby, baby. What's up, Chris? Hanging out, Beard Town hanging out. All right, let's take a look at this uh, recruiting class before we go and, and bang out this first season. Guys, this is a tremendous class. Hold on, look at this. School information, Missouri Tigers. We're a 52 prestige school. That's as middle of the road as it gets. We're, I mean, we're in the SEC. That's nice. Uh, but 52 on Team Prestige. Look at the recruiting class we just pulled in. Raheem Flanagan, point guard, in the top 10 at the Houston Classic. Mike O's at center. So our two most my two most important positions, point guard and center, we landed them both. Mike, top five at the Houston Classic. And Tremaine Allen, a shooting guard. Who, oh, he was decent, not spectacular at Georgia, and he was top 25 at Houston. So a top 5, a top 10, and a top 25 all at the regional camp. We pulled in three of the best 25 players in the Great Plains region. One of them was a top 5 player in Mike O's. Uh, I would love to know how he did. I don't know whether he went would have gone to Indy or whether he would have gone to uh, East Coast Jam. But does the show Missouri's recruit ranking? Uh, it will show it at at the end of the stream. We'll get there. Uh, you're going to have to hang to the end of the stream or come back and catch me uh, once we get it posted up to YouTube because it's going to be at the very, very end. So at the start of every season, it'll show you the rank, the overall ranking of last year's class. But it doesn't do, uh, you know, most recruiting services do an ongoing ranking saying like, okay, well, as it stands, 
this team is at this ranking, this team's at this ranking. This game doesn't have that. It just does one ranking at the end, that's it. And that you get that email at the start of your next season. It's one of the five emails that you get at the start of every season. So, with that being said, we've got our guards, our center, and remember, we've still got a power forward. So we've got four out of the five positions already figured out. Uh, the shooting guard coming in is a top 25 camper. Um, it's a little bit weak to be a starter in a power conference. He's going to take a little bit of time to develop. Uh, a top 10 point guard, again, as a freshman, he's not going to be excellent, but, you know, uh, O should be pretty good as a top fiver. All right, so we're having all these problems. You know, I always find I get all these problems... I always find that I've got all these problems when I take over a team. Everybody's in a pissy mood. And then after like three years, this stuff just stops. Alright, so Derek Taylor's causing problems for sure. He needs to be addressed. Alright, he at least apologized quickly. Rod Miller. He appreciates me talking to him. Okay, good. I appreciate you. All right, that should be everything there. <laughs> you got it on all day, Beer Town. I'm loving. I love that response, man. That's that's really cool. Glad you've been waiting for the stream. Glad to be bringing it to you. I'm super hyped to be bringing it to you. Uh, I was excited to get in here. I always love taking over a new school and, and getting in and getting my hands dirty. I'm really going to be hyped to bring you the next stream once these these three guys that we just recruited, once they show up on campus. Uh, I'll definitely be excited for that. But I am excited for that. A lot of times I'm really, really nervous and not all that excited about taking over a new team. But with this point guard, I mean, this should be a decent year. <clears throat> no, I don't see a whole lot of players leaving once I come from a different program. I don't. Uh, I don't see it any more than more than I normally see it. You know, I normally have a player or two. I, I don't know. Like every probably two out of three years, I'll have a player transfer. It's just because a lot of these guys. Yeah, ask all the questions you want, buddy. Uh, a lot of these times want a lot of these guys want playing time. I'm bringing in talented players, and a lot of them want playing time, and they don't always get what they want. Uh, and then you also find, you know, there's a handful of guys that just have a bad attitude in general. All right, hold on. More weekly incidents. George Floyd, Gerald, Gerald Floyd. All right, Gerald Floyd is our star player. So that is an issue. All right, he's going to try harder. That's good. Oh, wait, what is this? All right, Kelvin Frowl and Brian Best. And Kevin Frowl, here he is causing trouble twice. So I have no idea who he is, but he's definitely on my uh, ish list. Oh, he's going to try harder. Okay. You see, I, I, what's up? Raiding with five Raiders. Love to see it, CTG. Thanks, buddy. Seven seven viewers. Love to see it. It's Push a Man. What's up? All right, so we are trying to work through all of our weekly. All right, Friel, we, we dealt with him. Brian Best is a, also a dummy. And Antoine Thornton. So Brian Best and Antoine Thornton. I find that if I call these guys and just admonish them, as long as they apologize usually oh yeah you do have to listen to it unfortunately buddy uh as long as they apologize it usually seems uh the guys that want the high discipline they don't get upset because if a, if a guy says like i got my coach set to a high discipline rating so i try to stick with that if a guy says he wants high discipline and you don't do it they can get pissy but uh, i find just calling and dealing with these incidents as long as they apologize and you walk away from it, it usually does all right. So hopefully that addressed all of the incidents that we had this week. There were quite a few of them. There he is. 
salty that I left the Knights and you come to talk trash about me leaving Bellarmine. Look, I left Bellarmine in great shape. I start off the stream by telling you, man, uh, you know, the <laughs> dropping gems. Uh, that guy at Bellarmine is going to be amazing for them. He's going to be really, really good. I've got them set up with at least three players that all should be, by the time they graduate, by the time they're seniors, every one of them should be uh, all-conference players, uh, you know, in their own right. So I don't have any qualms about leaving Bellarmine because we came here, and if you missed the start of the stream, man, we had crazy interest from all kinds of recruits. I was just showing it since you guys just joined in with the raid. Let me show you this recruiting class we just brought in. All right, so we brought in, first of all, Tremaine Allen, shooting guard, uh, ranked 198th in the nation. He was top 25 player at Houston. Houston's one of the regional camps, so this is one of the top 25 players in the Great Plains region. It also, he's also from Texas. I do have uh, my sights set on getting into Texas as a pipeline state eventually. It is full of talent down there in Texas. Secondly, we got Raheem Flanagan. We were we were after uh, the MVP of the Houston camp, who was a small forward. He chose to go to Iowa State. And then we were looking at another small forward, actually offered him, but we noticed our in-home visit with Raheem Flanagan went so well, we had catapulted to the top of his list without an offer even being out. Not to mention, Flanagan is a top 10 player at the Houston Classic, and he's a point guard, which if you've seen my top 10 uh, top 10 tips video that I did for GM Games, point guard is an absolute must position to have. So we got a top 25 guard, a top 10 guard, and then you come to Mike O's, the center. He's a hometown boy out of Montgomery City, Missouri, and he was top five at the Houston Classic. One of the best five players in the region is coming to Missouri. So we got top five, top 10, top 25 Three of the top 25 players in the region coming. One of them's a hometown boy. One of them gets us in our pipeline. Guys, we hit almost every mark. Like, if I could have chosen my three recruits, I, I think I would have only chosen, you know, I don't know if I would have chosen any of them differently, actually. I mean, if I could have just picked, I would have taken Flanagan, O's, and I would have taken Detmer instead of Allen, but you, know, you do what you do, right? Watch the tip video four times. Love to hear it. Night and day difference at point guard. That's 100% correct. 100% correct. He is, uh, he's the top five in region. He's not top five nationally, but he's top five in region. My guess is he was probably a top 25 player at either East Coast Jam or Indy Elite, whichever camp he ultimately attended. I myself went to the Georgetown, uh, the Georgia Superstar, uh, because I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to recruit at this level straight out of the gate, but... As you can see, those concerns have been alleviated. And if we can have uh, even just a season that, you know, I don't get fired, uh, we'll be good to go. I should set up my depth chart. So let's let the AI handle that for now. And, I mean, obviously they're going to do about what I would do. Although I don't, why is this center in instead of the other? Oh, he's got an attacker. Okay, that's cool. And this guy really has nothing. I mean, the scoring's a one. Ugh. All right, I'm with you, computer. See, sometimes the AI, you know, it'll pull some gems. Sometimes they can mess with you. Like, if you've got a guy that really is just demanding playing time and the AI might not be recognizing it, sometimes you got to fix it. But, oh, and we're losing to Little Rock right out of the gate. Are you kidding me? That's a pathetic start. As good as our Bellarmine Knights started off, you know, we ultimately had a down season at 7-22, and but we started off with that first win. Now we come into Missouri and right out of the gate at home losing to Little Rock. That's pathetic. We need some inside players. Stat. Cannot wait for Mike O's to show up. Cannot wait for Mike O's to show up. That is for certain. So now we got to go on the road to Pacific. Hopefully this turns around. You know, next year, I certainly think just those three players are going to be enough to get us on a real nice trajectory. 
And then by year three, we should be sitting real pretty over here. Uh, but first, we got to make it through the first two years, and we got to avoid getting fired. And there we go. On the road, there was Gerald Floyd with 26 points. Nice win over Pacific. So, feel the burn. Get out of here, Chris. I don't want to hear about the Sun Belt. I want to hear about the Missouri Tigers. We're going to be taking over this SEC. There's going to be like Kentucky who, Florida who. It's going to be all Missouri Tigers. Missouri is taking over college basketball right here on the GM Games Twitch channel. Or if you're catching us later on the GM Games YouTube, doesn't matter. It's all Missouri all the time. Uh, they're going to be dominating sooner rather than later. Now, uh, we get a little bit of a matchup here with the old Big, Tw Big 12. Big 10, Big 12. Yeah, Big 12, Baylor. Uh, I really like Baylor in... Do I have to... Do you have declare early turned off? No. I uh, always leave that on. Uh, Baylor is, out of all the teams I watched this year, and it was such a weird sports year, you know, start, stop, start, stop with the pandemic. Uh, but I watched a Baylor game earlier in the year. I was like, they look like a great athletic basketball team. Baylor's my pick to win it all in the NCAAs. They're in the Sweet 16, I think. Yeah, they beat uh, Wisconsin. So uh, they're still my pick. They're looking good, but it's a weird year, so who knows? Uh, they're rolling here, though. Gerald Floyd with 14. Nobody else really showed up, and we eat another loss there. That was an easy to, loss to see coming, though. You know, we're, we're really just going to have to have Gerald Floyd pick us up, sit us on his shoulders, carry us right through this season. Because Even though some of these other guys have some decent star ratings, the power forward, I think, is the only other one that I really liked his defense and scoring ratings. And really, like, when I'm evaluating a team, I start at scoring, then I look at defense, and then I go from there. Uh, it's really scoring defense, then maybe stars, and then go from there. So, really, <laughs> Random's back. Did we win the dance? No, Random, we have not won the dance yet, but we did land a pretty good recruiting class. We got a top five regional center, a top 10 regional point guard, and top 25 regional shooting guards. So three of the top 25 players in region coming to Missouri. We landed Mike O's. We got Raheem Flanagan. And I'm not going to be able to remember the shooting guard's name right off. I think it's Allen. Tremaine Allen, maybe. There we go. Beating Utah Valley. See, all I want to do, and there's Aaron Smith. I, I think that's the power forward, if I'm not mistaken. Once I actually recruit this entire team then usually I know who all the players are. But for right now, I know Gerald Floyd is the point guard, and everybody else is sort of like a... Oh, look at that! Look at Bellerman! Oh, look at Bellerman! Preston Means, Dave Malloy, where you at? Those are my boys! Look at that! Bellerman's beating on people already! We're going to keep up with them, that's for sure. Bellerman beating on people, baby. Man, you know, you got to move on it at some point and move up to this next tier of recruits because, you know, it can be interesting at the low levels, but man, it's so much more interesting when you're actually competing and, and making these deep runs. But it does hurt to leave a school like that and, and leave, uh, leave players like that because you know they're going to be good. You know, I'm not going to do it yet. We're going to save the joust. I guarantee you they, they have another big win in them. They'll have another big win in them for this stream. There will be another Bellerman moment before we're gone. Uh, but, you know, most of my teams do best after I leave. So I think I'm good at recruiting and not good at coaching and strategy. I mean, there's some kind of problem because Tulane and Auburn in the 2020 version, they both won national championships like a year or two after I left. So I totally set them up, and then they're like, yeah, get rid of this idiot, and then we'll go win some games uh, with his players, right? So... This is uh, the Claw Sweet Baby Jesus. I had uh, Founders Porter earlier, uh, but it was the last of a six pack. So we're on to Sweet Baby Jesus. Uh, it's a chocolate peanut butter porter, and it is delicious. Look, the Zags doing business there. Lee Ireland filling up the stat sheet. Oh, 
Now we gotta take on Chris's Long Beach State team. Chris, look away. Oh, you you like that one too? It's good, isn't it? No, your ass did not deceive you. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a crafty beer. I mean it's not Bud Light. Um, it's a crafty one. All right, Chris, look away. Don't watch, or maybe watch. I don't know. We might we might lose. I mean, this might be uh, Long Beach State's second one shining moment. Nah, we took care of business. Gerald Floyd dropped twenty on him. We we won by nine. Yeah, Stanley, I don't do too much of the coaching from game to game. I like to, you know, I've got the the mindset of I'm going to run my strategy and make everybody else adjust to me. I try to set myself up ahead of time. Uh, just like, you know, if I think I'm at a school where I'm bringing in a lot of one and duns, I drop the strategy, like the set offense usage down to like 50, run a motion and just sort of roll the ball out there and let them do their thing. Uh, if I think I'm running a bunch of seniors, then maybe I'm going heavy into a Princeton. Uh, like in this save, I set up, I'm going to run heavy into a zone and a press, and then I'm going to make teams react to me. Uh, I'm not going to try to overanalyze every game. I'm going to try to put better players on the floor than them and just be better at what I do than they are at what they do. And, and that's that's the way we're rolling. I, I do completely ignore the scouting reports. Uh, that's just uh, the program building is what really interests me, I guess. The like day to day, I don't know. I mean, how do you go in? Like in real coaching, I wouldn't have any problem sitting there and analyzing that and looking at it. But in, in a in a game, I don't know how much I want to sit there and be like, okay, this this team's gonna run a two three. So like, how are we gonna attack that? Well, you know, it's easy. You practice against a two three offense or against a two three defense. I don't do a ton of tinkering. There we go. 12-point win against Wofford. All right, Brown Best suffered an injury. Gerald Floyd dropped 16. We're all good. As long as Gerald Floyd stays healthy, this season will be good enough that we shouldn't uh, have any issues. You might be right. That might be why I can recruit and not do uh, not do super coaching. Uh, I've definitely won a handful of championships and solo saves and, and made deep enough runs that I don't think that the my my coaching is necessarily holding it back. Uh, but it, it very well could be. Uh, there's just it's hard to like test, right? All this all the results suggest it's my coaching because <laughs> every time I leave a school, they end up winning a title. Uh, they always do it with my players. Random test tried to act on the scouting reports and lost every game. Uh, and see that that would be frustrating to me. I like I like getting the um, I like bringing the players in and setting up a strategy that I think will work and rolling with it. Let's get this depth chart fixed. Tournament time is definitely when it's important to win games. So if you're going to slow down, I definitely suggest. Now see what is this? I never understand. There are times when the computer will prioritize an injured player over a healthy player, and it's bizarre to me. I don't get it. We're going to flip these small forwards and let the AI handle the matrix. We're going to run with Floyd Miller, Lapis Smith, Harley. So, yeah, if you're going to slow it down, do it in the tournament, especially the NCAA tournament. If you're making it, that's where you're going to get your biggest prestige changes. Uh, I'm not sure reputation-wise. I haven't tracked it, but I do know, like, obviously you want to gain reputation. Uh, deep runs in March is an easy way to do it. Uh, I haven't compared that game uh, against regular season wins, conference tournament wins, that sort of thing. Team prestige, absolutely heavily, heavily slanted toward NCAA tournament wins. Uh, so if you're going to slow down and focus on something, that's the time to do it. Uh, I just don't do it that much. You know, I, I feel like in my head, if I go in and change it and then we lose, it's my fault for changing what we're doing. Uh, so I just, I like to set it and run. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Stanley. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely get going on the Missouri artwork, Chris. Uh, sink your heart into it. We might not leave here. This might be home for... 
what is 2022. We made it to like 2047 last time. So we got the Vermont Catamounts coming into Mizzou Arena. It's Mizzou, right? That's what we decided on. The Zoo, I believe it's affectionately referred to. Five and two, four and one at home against the Catamounts of Vermont. Taking care of business, baby. Aaron Smith, Rod Miller. I didn't see Gerald Floyd anywhere, and we still did all right. So, I mean, for this season, like what we had left over, it's looking good. We're six and two. I think we just need 15 wins, top half of the conference. Make it. NCAA tournament, and I don't remember what the fourth one was. Probably raise prestige. Uh, but I, I definitely think. So, ooh, number sixteen, Illinois. That'll be a that'll be a tough one. But we still have a handful of these out of conference games. We're only in to the middle of December. We still got a handful of these out of conference games to try to get that up to eight nine wins, and then I think we can easily get to 15 in conference. You're going to stream for the first time, Breeze? Streaming's awesome, man. Uh, I remember I started off doing YouTube videos, and it took a lot of time, and yeah, putting in overlays and all this other stuff, and it, that's, there's definitely a lot of work getting everything set up, but once you get going, man, it's really cool and fun. Oh, what is this? I mean, nice to see a, a big-time top-10 matchup between the Cards and the Cats, but wrong team won. <laughs> went to overtime. That's pretty cool. Man, God. A Louisville-Kentucky basketball game went to overtime. I, I think it might have last year. But, I mean, that would just be taking months off the old ticker, baby. <laughs> uh, that is not what I want to see at all. But, yeah, streaming's awesome, man. Interacting with people is awesome. I absolutely... I enjoy it so much more than just flat out making videos. We're going to ignore whatever happened right there. Don't look at your screen. Let's just, uh, let's just fireside chat this out till we get to the next game. We don't want to talk about that result. Uh, we want to move on, move forward. Uh, but yeah, I definitely do appreciate the interaction with the streaming. I like that it doesn't have to feel overproduced, like everything doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, if I did a video and, you know, stutter or say something dumb or whatever, like you got to go in and edit it or cover it up. Like streaming, people know what it is. It's live. It's streaming. This is this is what's going on right now. So I'm definitely going to do something dumb or say something dumb and it, I get a little bit of leeway and a little bit of personal freedom and then the interaction. So it's awesome. Yeah, I didn't see anything, Beardtown. My game glitched out, actually. Uh, the whole screen was white for a minute there. I have no idea what happened in the Illinois-Missouri rivalry game there. Uh, I just missed it. So uh, I guess we'll have to see what happens. I don't even know. I, I feel like I feel like the game might also glitch next year. But two years from now, we'll see what happens in that game. I think it'll be good. Oh, jeez. And then to watch St. Mary's go in and beat them by 30 on their own court. Like, did they, was that? <sighs> Yikes. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. You think this is going to be season MVP? Uh, I think this season, I think this season we're just going to try to get that 15 wins. Take a look here at our goals. Qualify for the tournament. That's going to be dicey. Top half of conference. Ugh. Finish above 500, we can do that, I think. And then if we can do either of these and above 500, we've got a shot at the final goal. Uh, regardless, I don't see dropping more than down to maybe like 80% job security. I think we're going to hit the 15 wins. Oh, you're thinking, you were asking who's going to be my season MVP. Gerald Floyd, no doubt. The point guard, the five star point guard. He's, uh, absolute stud of a player and of course as I say that we go out and win by 22 and he's nowhere to be seen but Gerald Floyd unquestionably the best player on this team now next year I'm thinking it's going to be the big man the big freshman but those guys like all three of those freshmen they're going to come in and every one of them is going to be at least three star straight out of the gate I guarantee at least one of them is four star and that's as a freshman. They're all going to have five-star potential. Oh, 
All right, no games today. Pushing on toward the end of December. So, you know, before my device uh, fell apart, I used to be able to, like, see how long I've been streaming, see how many people were on, all that stuff. I can't see anything now except for chat and my games. So, I got no idea how long I've been live, how long I've been going, but we're pushing toward the new year here. We're December. Oh, we're on Christmas Day of 2022. Here we come. But, um... Yeah, we're going to make it through this entire season. We'll get to at least be able to see. We'll get to June 26. We'll get back to June 26. That's the year. I like to I like to flow from one June 26 to the next. I feel like it usually takes a little bit over two hours just based on how much I jabber throughout the stream. Um, but we can get there. We can always speed it up a little bit. Let's see. What we got. Nice. Three players mid-tier up. I don't even want to say. Yeah, yeah. Three players mid-tier up. That's a fair assessment. Um... I mean, we know they're gonna. All three of those guys are going to be good, especially the center and the point guard. I, I got great faith in both of those guys. That shooting guard may be a bit of a work in progress. I certainly think he'll be serviceable at least by like his junior year. Uh, we got a home date against Northeastern here, and we taking care of business. But it's <laughs> more interesting than it should be. I would like if we're playing Northeastern. In Mizzou Arena, I would prefer for the crowd to be gone with like eight minutes left, right? Uh, they had to stick around for that one. We only won by about seven points. Oh, America, Mr. Recruiting, 11 card maniacs watching the stream. Hey, I appreciate it. You know, the CTG guys are, are bringing in at least half of it. Uh, bringing in some from Twitch, bringing in some from Twitter or Discord or wherever you guys are coming from. I'm glad that you're here. I'm having a blast with it. The recruiting class went... Here, I'll just go ahead and show it to you one more time. Hey, when I bring in a class like this, I'm going to show it off throughout the whole stream. Go ahead and prepare for that. We got Raheem Flanagan. He was top 10 at the Houston camp. Mike O's was top 5. So that's going to be our point guard center combination for the next four years. And then Tremaine Allen, the three-star shooting guard, he was top 25 at Houston. So all three of these guys are players. Two of them are four-star, top 100 players. Mike O's trying to crack the top 50. He's right around there. Uh, but this is going to be a tremendous building block for this Missouri program moving forward. So there you go. All right, let's get into 2023. Oh, we're, go we're going to Kentucky. We're starting off SEC play at the number one team in the country. Louisville managed to take them to overtime in Rupp Arena. And if any of you guys have ever watched a game in Rupp Arena, they're very much uh, eight-on-five ball games. The guys with the striped shirt also play for the blue team in this arena. Never seen anything like it. Nobody can get a call ever. Uh, but we're going to go in there, and we're going to see if these Tigers, uh, these Tigers and Gerald Floyd, can they get it done against the Wildcats? Can they shock the world? Or are they not? Are they just going to get whooped and go home and try again next year? Guys, keep an eye out throughout this stream. Like, I'm enjoying this year. We have some good players. We're going to you know, do good things for our job security. But what's really going to get me pumped this year is seeing some of these Bellarmine results pop up. Keep an eye out. If I miss one, y'all shout it out for me. Uh, we will take a look at them at the end of the season. Missouri, the Tigers and the Wildcats, and yeah, 23 points. They didn't even have to get out of bed to send us home like that. Uh, they ran us straight out of Lexington, right on back to Missouri. So be it. Came from YouTube. Glad to have you. It doesn't matter where you came from. Uh, I'm glad you came from YouTube, but I love that everybody's here regardless. Doesn't matter. All good. All good. But yeah, it's nice having um, you know followers and, and whatnot on the different platforms, and then just trying to let everybody know when we get up and live, and hoping that as many people can see it as they can. A lot of times I do stream on weeknights, uh, but I am definitely going to try to get some weekend streams in, so that like if people are overseas or in different time zones or whatever, uh, I want to make sure to to cater to you guys too. Uh, I wasn't sure that streaming this past weekend, given that the NCAA games were on, was a great idea. Um, but, all right, here we go. First chance at a ranked win at home. Obviously, we didn't have much of a chance on the road against the Cats, but the LSU Tigers against the Missouri Tigers 
we get them at home. Can we put a scare into them? No, kind of. Let's call that a kind of. Lost by eight to LSU. Not a shock at all. We're in conference play. We need seven wins in conference. We're not off to a hot start. Seven wins. I don't mind, you know, I don't mind being in the bottom half of the conference. I don't mind if we have to miss the tournament. I would really like to get the 15 wins. We got more than half of it in the out-of-conference period. Now we got about 18, 16 games left to try to get the other seven. So we don't even have to go 500. We just got to win home games against bad teams. (laughs) Your team was out today. Yeah, uh, my team obviously got left out of the whole deal this year. Oh, my gosh, the SEC is brutal. We start off with number two, then number 21, on the road at number 13. What is with this SEC? Arkansas, looking like another tough game here. Tigers and the Razorbacks. Yeah. Oh, we got them. 85 to 73. There's our big road win. There's our first win over a ranked team with Missouri. Let's check the box score. How'd we get it done? Who was it? It was Smith. Aaron Smith. That's the junior. He will be back, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, he got it done on the boards. He got it done scoring. And, of course, Gerald Floyd with 19. Got the plus 10 on the plus minus there. 3 for 5 from deep. So, yeah, it was Floyd and, and Aaron Smith. You know? Um, nice win there. Nice 12-point win on the road. Look at that. They were leading in the first half. We went for 52 in the second half. Wow. What a second half. 52 points for the Missouri Tigers. First win over a ranked opponent at Missouri. Uh, First conference win on the road. I mean, I will take it, fellas. I'll take what I can get. Because the start of this conference schedule is brutal. Look, we're going to go against Kentucky again. Mmm. The Dons over Santa Clara there. Oh, Tiger on Tiger Hatred. My team from last year's stream versus this year's stream team. Oh, oh that's a great well, We're calling them the stream team. All right, when I get a dream, when I get a, my best roster, we're calling them the stream team. Uh, all right, Auburn versus Missouri. We don't have a stream team yet, but we're going to get there. All right, Tiger on Tiger. Oh, Missouri. Whoo, get it done. Archie, is that Archie Haley? Is that what his name is? He keeps popping up as player of the game, scoring like crazy. That was a big win. I mean, that was like margin wise, not necessarily based on beating Auburn. I mean, you know, unless Cards has been coaching Auburn, uh, Auburn is kind of hit or miss. Uh, so you get them at home, you got to take care of business, especially if you're trying to get to 15 wins. But to beat them by 20 is, uh, I'll take that, you know. Got to refresh the beverage here. All right. All right, so now we're headed down to Georgia. A little Georgia Bulldog action here. Yet another team. I think I've played with like half the teams in the SEC. I've been Missouri. I've been Georgia. I've been Auburn. Uh, I feel like I've been one more. I mean, Tulane was once an SEC team, so I'll claim Tulane. All right. Missouri and Georgia. Oh, my word. Aaron Smith again. Archie Harley. Archie Harley is playing his heart out, dude. Who? Surely he's a senior that we're going to lose, right? Oh, Archie Harley, he's a sophomore. All right, so he'll probably be a backup next year, but he's looking pretty good. Let's look at these player impact estimates. Harley at 18. He's a, Archie Harley right now is the most impactful player on the team. 
Now, I will say that running this uh, zone defense, sometimes I have seen where the center is like, they, they'll pick up some, uh, just a uh, increased number of seals, more than I would expect. And sometimes it can influence that player impact estimate. No, I don't like to lose to Kentucky. I like to beat Kentucky. I like to take over the SEC from Kentucky and smash them into the ground and then steal their record for most SEC championships and leave them in the dust and obliterate them, take all the recruits, and make their program an embarrassment. That's why I like uh, to be in the SEC. Can't do it in the first year, obviously, but long term, that's 1,000% exactly what we're going to do. The odds against Kentucky, yeah. Yeah. We're not we're not looking good in that game, but um, give it a few years, and they won't be up on such a high horse coming in. Hey, it's the first year. I told you, first year they're going to take care of business. Maybe the first two or three years. Uh, get back to me in 2026. It's 2023 right now. 2026. Uh, let's see what's going on. Oh, 2023. Let's see what's going on. What do you got for me, UK? Oh, oh, you got nothing? Oh, uh, you got an ass kicking straight out of Mizzou Arena? Get on back to Lexington. Get out. You're drunk, Kentucky. Go home. Get out of here. Whew, trying to mess with my Tigers. Get out. Whoo, baby. Don't mess with the Tigers at all. We're taking over the SEC this year. 2026, there's nothing to be said about it. 2023, we're going to win the tournament right now. Let's go. Let's go, Gerald Floyd. Woo -hoo -hoo. Get hyped. Took out the number two team in the country. That's right. That's what we do. I'm telling you, if you want my... Um if you want my theory on it, <clears throat> I think that here and there, especially at home, I mean, because you're always going to have a, a lot bigger advantage at home, but I just think a lot of these teams with like freshman heavy, freshman laden teams, the computer never puts enough emphasis into learning the zone offenses. I, they just don't. So in my opinion, you can win a lot more games than you should against the computer just by running his own defense. So that's why we've implemented that. Now we got to head down, play the Aggies of Texas A&M, where we win again by 11. Aaron Smith is losing his mind. Gerald Floyd pitching in with double-digit points. And the Missouri, uh, we went like 8-6. and six, uh, No, uh, whoa. I don't even know what it is, guys. We're 13-5. and five. We're 5-2 five and two in the SEC play. We've already beaten two top 25 opponents. We're going to the NCAA tournament, period. That's what's happening. Unless somebody gets hurt, unless this season just completely comes apart, which could happen. This is still our first season. I still don't have, you know, these – I don't have the roster built yet. But we're as of right now, end of January, we got two months to go, February and March, and let's not – Let's not uh, play around here. February and March is where college basketball teams are made. It's where champions are made. That's where it's, it all comes down to February and March for sure. But as of right now, January 27th, 2023, I guarantee if I go take a look at the bubble watch, uh, we're in. And right as soon as I say that, we get pounded at home by the Alabama Crimson Tide. They're unranked, so we can beat number two Kentucky at home, but Alabama has our number apparently. So we go down there. All right. You know, it's still every game can go either way. We've got enough talent to win every game, and we lack enough talent to lose every game. How's that? I guess I should check emails, make sure we don't have any more of these weekly incidents going on. Yeah, see, it looks like we sorted it out. Uh, we called up and yelled at everybody. Got rid of all that stuff. Now, Gerald Floyd has dropped off of the top 30 Norton candidates. And keep in mind, he was number 17, so he actually went down. Um, and it's just because a lot of other people have been stepping up, uh, namely our, our inside guys. I was really worried about our inside players at the start of the year. And then as it goes on, 
you know, they, uh, God, the two star guy has been great. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Smith, the, the power forward that's coming back, he's been great. Now we got to head to LSU. All right. Uh, number 11 team in the country on the road. This is going to be a problem, I assume. Going to follow a team feature up to three teams. That would actually be really good. I would love to be following game by game Bellerman right now. We'll check him out at the end of the season, but I'd love to be following him game by game. Yeah. So Gerald Floyd tried. Aaron Smith tried. Uh, didn't get a whole lot of other help, and we fall to LSU by 10. LSU 19-2 and two on the season. So we are stuck at 13 wins for now. Uh, hopefully we've got some winnable games coming up because we need two more wins in the regular season. we got two months to do it. I think we'll get there. Uh, but, you know, let's not, let's not start counting eggs yet. Counting chickens. Let's not start counting chickens. I was thinking eggs in a basket, chickens before they hatch, whatever. Yeah, inside players get a lot of love, and you, you've you got to have them. Man, uh, an inside, a guy with a high field goal inside rating who also has a little bit of a scoring rating can be an absolute beast. I've also seen, if you follow the Wolverine Studios and their WSBA, uh, the, the Nets, or oh, I'm sorry, the whatever the Brooklyn team is, They've got a guy that can do nothing but score on the – he's an inside scorer and an offensive rebounder. His scoring rating is terrible, but he keeps getting offensive rebounds and putbacks, and he's dominating. He's turning them – he's carrying them into – like he's their third, you know, big three, whatever. He's the third wheel, and he's carrying them into the playoffs as of right now, so it's crazy. Brooklyn Hoops, is that what it is? All right, so South Carolina and Missouri, two teams that have both won 13 games. It's a home game for us. Take care of your business, Missouri. That's right. Archie Harley, Rod Miller, and Gerald Floyd with 23. South Alabama with a big win at Texas State. Yeah, the Brooklyn Hoops. Random task. Uh, have you seen that power forward that I'm talking about? I think it's Tarkanian. <clears throat> Doesn't look all that talented, but man, his his stats really make him look like a monster. Oh, I think he was uh, I think he was an All Star, and you would never know it just looking at his ratings, but looking at his stats, man, it plays out like that. And it's just a guy that's like really good at this these two specific things that just happen to have a really good. Uh, chemistry between them you know so we got some tigers and some bulldogs and humphrey coliseum headed down to memphis to memphis state i've been watching too much penny hardaway this weekend we're headed down to mississippi state to play the bulldogs let's see if this can be our 15th win get the board off our back oh my word we came so close floyd and harley tried they tried, but we fell just short against Mississippi State, so we're going to have to try again. We do have a couple of road games coming up here, so our best, our next best shot to hit 15 wins might actually be on t uh, February 14th against the Volunteers of Tennessee. Oh, the next mod's going to have the Final Four court picture. That'll be cool. That will definitely be interesting. I'm not sure if I got the latest mod or not. I keep looking for these Bellerman games. Keep looking for those guys. If you see them doing anything, shout it out for sure. Alright, we're headed into Vandy. So Vandy's in Nashville. Memorial Gymnasium in Nashville. I've been in there a couple of times. I think I saw... Who was it? I don't remember what I was there for. Maybe like a UC Vandy game years ago. And like Jay Cutler was there. Like the football players were there doing like speeches at halftime or something. So I'm sure I'm dating myself. But Missouri and Vandy. Let's get it going on the hardwood. There we go. 15 wins for the Tigers. Archie Harley, Gerald Floyd, leading the way. Boom. 15 wins. Goal one. Down. Got it. 
now we got to make the NCAA. Uh, we need to finish top half in the conference. Let's. That's the next easiest goal to make, top half of the conference, and right now we're doing it. Okay? we got 14 teams in conference. That means we need to be in the top seven. The seventh best team is six and six. So we're one game ahead of that right now. So we're on track to get two out of our four goals, which is enough to keep us actually at 100% job security. That's if we don't make the NCAA tournament, which I think we may. I think as of right now, this this win-loss record, this conference record, the win over Kentucky, uh, the win over, uh, what was the other ranked team that we beat? Uh, it was Arkansas. Uh, whatever the other the other ranked team like we've got a couple of nice ranked wins we've got a nice conference record got a nice overall record we're headed for the tournament as of right now still we haven't done anything to mess that up beach bears super late hey it's not a problem you're still gonna get all the best parts of the stream you might have missed the sausage being made but you're still gonna get the meal at the end because you're gonna see the tournament you're gonna see how we finish you're going to see who else offers us in vain because we're very much uh, hooked into Missouri here. Uh, and you're also going to see our recruit class rankings. And there we go, beating the Volunteers, Gerald Floyd, Walter Lapis. They're doing their thing down in Missouri. We're to 16 wins. Guys, we're going to be pushing 20. They asked us for 15. We're going to give them 20. Always, always under promise and over deliver. We're well above a 500. We're pushing for 10 wins in conference. We're pushing for the NCAAs. Good things are happening in Missouri in year one, and that's before the recruiting class shows up. Once the recruiting class shows up, it's going to get bonkers. And we might not have, like, the, th the those three recruits, they may not replace what Gerald Floyd is doing. But keep in mind, um, Smith will be back the power forward, and then our, our biggest contributor so far has been this center, this sophomore center, the two-star. Uh, and we're, we're bringing in a guy that's going to be better than him, period. So uh, I think that we're probably, with uh, Tremaine Allen, I think he's probably, if not in year one, by year two, he'll be a better shooting guard than the one that we already have on the roster. Woo! Nice little win at Ole Miss. Archie Harley, Gerald Floyd. You know, you hear the same names over and over. It's Harley, it's Floyd, it's Harley, it's Floyd. Every now and then, Smith and Lapis jump in and do a little bit of work. Uh, but we're cruising right now, baby. The Missouri Tigers are cruising. 17 and 8. Let's get a quick, quick look at that bubble watch before we go any further. We're almost through February now. So there we go. Look at that. 26th team into the tournament. Look how many teams we're ahead of. You got to get all the way down to Mississippi, Mississippi State. Wyoming is the last at large. 17 and 9, 9 and 6. Mississippi State 7 and 7 in the SEC, 15 and 10 overall. That is still NCAA tournament material. We're 17 and 8, 9 and 5, net 32. We're looking good. <laughs> We're looking good. That's right. Let's go, Mizzou. Let's get it, baby. Let's get 20 wins. I think we can get 20 wins. We still got a handful of regular season games to do it. Then we're going to get conference play. Then we're going to get tournament play. Man. We might increase prestige in the first year, guys. It, we very well might. Ooh. This is going to be a tough one. I mean, we already got number two at home. Let's see if number eight's got anything for us. They're coming in with that Gator Chomp. Uh, let's see if we can send that on back to Gainesville. What do you got for us, Florida? It's not enough. In no way it's enough. Gerald Floyd. Gerald Floyd, baby. Gerald Floyd, baby. Uh, Aaron Smith. Archie Harley. 74-72. Another top ten team goes down in the zoo. Oh, my word. Tigers are taking over. I show up for one year and the Tigers are taking over. 
I thought this would be a you know a, a slog to get through this season. Gerald Floyd, uh, Harley. I mean, oh my word! I love this team. It's gonna be one of those you know like when Rick Pitino came into Kentucky. He 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 had his unforgettables, right? They weren't his guys. They weren't the the blue chip recruits. You know, you got Jamel Martinez and Travis Ford and all that. But you know what? They went out and won games, and they, they loved them. I love these Missouri Tigers. I love Gerald Floyd. Uh, uh, these guys are great. Lapis going out there, doing his thing. We're going to make it. These are – we're going to get – to our uh, stream team. We'll get there one day. But right now, we got our very own version of the Unforgettables. White guys with a mustache. Yeah, it was Jamel Martinez. That was a white guy with a mustache. He sticks out, you know? All right, Arkansas coming in. Can we get another victim? Another victim in the zoo. Hey, piggy, piggy, piggy. Oh, yes, we can. 12-point win. Rod Miller. Derek, oh, my God. We're about to hit 20 wins. We only got two games left in the regular season, but we're going off. This Mizzou team going off. The Tigers in the SEC, this is where basketball is played, baby, in Missouri. You can't touch us. You can't Kentucky, no. Florida, no. Arkansas, no. Like nobody can touch us. And this is before we get going. When we get going, it's just gonna be over. We're gonna keep an eye. We've been trying to keep an eye on Bellarmine as it goes. We're gonna get them at uh, season end. Uh, I'm pretty sure Chris is talking about Jamel Martinez. <laughs> when I was throwing out my uh, my Kentucky unforgettable, watch my uh oh, two injured. Who got hurt? How did I miss that? Aaron Smith. Oh, that says 55 days. You know what? Somebody, uh, Chris, grab this time code for me. I got an email to send. All right, so Aaron Smith broke his hand and he's out 55 days. That, my friends, is what we refer to in the business as a bummer. Oh, God. We were rolling, folks. We were going to be... We might have been a top eight seed, a top eight seed in the NCAA tournament. I mean, we still could be. We only got a couple of games left, but that's actually a, a pretty big loss. I mean, he was playing so well, so well. All right, Tiger on Tiger, and right away, Ty Person is trying to, you know, carry that weight. Paul Watson also showed up, but we just didn't have the firepower. Uh, we don't have the depth to address an injury like that. Yeah, we don't have the depth to address an injury like that. It's going to be really, really difficult. We are already kind of, uh, you know, our our inside was kind of held together by, like, duct tape and mirrors. And uh, we were trying to get by with what we had. Uh, but that's a devastating blow because that's by far our most talented inside player. So we'll see how we can grind out the rest of this season. I think we're still going to hit a lot of goals. And the really exciting part is going still, like the best part of this stream to me is still going to be bouncing over and seeing what Bellerman did with those players that we brought in for him. But... Uh, we were on a real, real roll, doing some damage. We still, this is a, a winnable game to hit 20 wins. Can we get to 20 in year one with Missouri? There it is, baby. Gerald Floyd, 
Archie Harley. You know, when the going gets tough, the tough get going, and we just hit 20 wins. I think that's a very, very successful first year. We saw it coming in. It was a nice, soft landing. Having Floyd, having Smith. We knew it wasn't... Uh, we knew it was a complete rebuild after this year, but this year we had talent. And you don't always get that, guys. Go back and look at our 2020 stream that I did. Uh, I got to Nebraska, and they just had nothing. The entire roster, I mean, it was just absent of talent. Had nothing at all to help it whatsoever. And that very much was not the case here. All right, so let's get through our scouting reports. Let's make sure we not, don't have Smith dra uh, declaring for the draft. All right, nobody declared. That's cool. Here is everyone declaring. You know, this is usually the only time I really see a whole lot of juniors go, and it looks like this is all just freshmen and sophomores. So that is – oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Strike that. We're a few years into it. I was thinking, like, my first year – it's obviously not the first year of the stream this is year three of the stream so it's all freshmen and sophomores which is actually exactly what i would expect um i don't see anybody from bellerman on the list so i guess uh you know tully he wasn't that good but i guarantee he had himself a fine season so let's go see what they did and i still cannot remember their conference so if somebody wants to shout it out in here i think it was a toward the top maybe like atlantic sun there we go bellerman baby uh so let's check out their schedule mm. 15 and 15 that's crap i don't know who took over but they must have tried to change something. That's not what I wanted to do. Look at Malloy. 11.6 rebounds a game as a freshman. Got up to 23 in a game. He had three double-doubles as a freshman. Three player of the games. Two player of the weeks. Guys, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I, I do know how to pick them. <laughs> that guy's a player. Uh, standings wise we're going to get the Atlantic Sun so they actually did pretty piss poor as far as record goes but uh, I'll stand by my players oh wait how was uh, how did Treely do alright so I mean just look at this roster uh, I mean look who's scoring points we got Lawson okay there's Jake Mitchell, who's a freshman. Did I bring him in? Because I do not remember him. But it says he's a freshman. I mean, I brought in the freshman class. I don't remember him specifically. But look, there's Malloy. There's Means. There's Treely. That's a significant amount of the scoring load. Where's the rebounds? They're doing a significant amount of the rebounding. I mean, th these players that we brought in definitely did their part. I don't know how this coach screwed it up. But our recruits did some serious business. So, yeah, let's get over here and jump into this SEC tournament and see what we can do without our power forward, big man. Uh, it, it is going to be difficult. I don't expect great things out of the SEC tournament. But if we win even one game, I think that will really help solidify our case. But we're 12-6 and six in the SEC. I think we've got a good case regardless. We should be in the tournament for sure. All right, so we get Auburn in the first round. I think we've played them twice and won twice. Can't say for certain, but let's see what we get. A little more Tiger on Tiger action. Taking a home top person, Gerald Floyd and Archie Harley. So now we get LSU. That one's going to be a lot more difficult. But, guys, we definitely got to 21 wins on the year. Uh, we delivered. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how else to call it. We delivered.
Oh, look at that. Seven point victory over LSU on a neutral court. Now we move on to play the Volunteers. Oh my. Now we got a game on a neutral court against the Volunteers. And if we had our power forward, I would like our chances in this game. As it is, I think we're probably due to be sent packing. Uh, the, the win over LSU is probably more than we deserved with the roster that we have. So I expect a loss here. But you never know. We could be we could be SEC finalists in the first year. Oh, we did it by two. Archie Harley. Oh, my God. These boys, look what they did. Look what they did. Watson, Harley, and Floyd. Why? I mean, Watson. Oh, he's playing so well. They're trying, guys. They're doing everything they can. SEC championship game. It said check the preview. Here we go. Bama by a point and a half. The Crimson Tide and the Tigers. These two teams, I guarantee, they've never met in an SEC uh, basketball championship game. There's just no way. Like, there's no Kentucky, no Arkansas, no Florida, no none of that. Missouri and Alabama on the hardwood. SEC championship game, March 11th, 2023, year one. Let's see what happens. Phone dork first stream. Let's go. I appreciate you being here, buddy. Thanks for the follow. We definitely appreciate that. Now, let's see. Can't check the dashboard. Did we best them? Doesn't matter. Regular season. Off the board. Get it out of here. It's March. It's the Missouri Tigers. It's Gerald Floyd. And it's a banner. Year one. Year one champions. I I think we're going to make the, SC, uh, the NCAA tournament. Missouri, baby! Hang the banner! First year! First year, your boys coming into Missouri. Run in the SEC! Get them out of here! We're taking it over! 38 conference championships. We're going to double it by the time we end the stream. Woo! I don't care if we beat Bama before. We beat them right now. We're in the tournament. We're going to be a good, good seed in the tournament. We did it without our power forward. We did it in year one. There's no stopping us. Absolutely no stopping us. All down here. No. Uh, all down here from a difficulty standpoint, I could keep that. Yeah, regular season's out the door. We won in the championship game. All right, so we got some playing games. Ryder, Missouri State, Wyoming, uh, Western Kentucky. All right, in Syracuse in the first round, the Texas Longhorns grab the one seed. They're going to be the number one overall team. Villanova Wildcats, there's your Florida Gators, St. Mary's. There we go, a five seed in the tournament in year one. Your Missouri Tigers, 24-9 and nine on the year to face Nevada. If we can get past them, we would face St. Mary's in the second round. And if you recall, St. Mary's is a team that absolutely trounced to, by 30 Illinois right after Illinois beat us. So a dangerous, dangerous team in the second round. I, I'm not putting anything past the first round, though. 5-12 is no joke. But five seed in year one. So we got Pitt, OSU, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Central Arkansas, Texas Tech. In St. Louis, Iowa grabs a one seed. The Illini, a two. The Zags, the Ville, baby. Uh, SMU, Notre Dame, Cal. All right. Oklahoma City, it's NC State, San Diego State, VCU, and Bama. Iowa State, UConn. There's UNC. And in Phoenix, the last number one seed. The University of Kentucky, Michigan State of two, Arkansas, LSU. All right, a lot of SEC teams got seated ahead of us, guys. We beat them all in the SEC tournament. We're about to beat them all again. How's recruiting going? Recruiting was fantastic. We got a top five camper, a top 10 camper, and a top 25 camper. Three of the best 25 players in the region. 
Uh, we got the the top five player was a center. The top ten player was a point guard. So we definitely addressed two big positions of need. And then we went ahead and grabbed a shooting guard to round it out. Our power forward's coming back. So we've got four of our five starting slots pretty much figured out already. Recruiting could not have gone better. Now, Beertown, for recruiting, I honestly look at how they did in the camps. How they did in camps is going to give you a good indication of their current level of ability. I mean, there's no better way to judge a basketball player than when they're on the court. Uh, the, the ratings, how high they're rated on the lists, is going to give you a better idea of their potential. So, like, a lot of times if you get a guy, say you recruit the 20th best player overall ranking-wise, right? He's ranked number 20 in the country, but he had a bad camp. Generally, what you're going to see is he's got relatively low current abilities, but pretty high uh, potential abilities. And he could still be an, a one-and-done type of player, even if he doesn't play for you, even if he contributes nothing for you. Because he's got such great potential, the NBA is still going to be all over him. Uh, but a lot of times, camps are going to give you current ability, and ratings going to give you more of a potential ability overall. So uh, you got to find, you know, you got to find value. Uh, however you can find it. So let's see if we can make the second round of the NCAAs here. Nevada and Missouri in the first round of the tournament. And we fall. We get the dreaded 5-12 upset. Nevada takes us out. Maybe I'm supposed to say Nevada. Nevada. I don't know. I might have mispronounced it, and that's why they, they beat us. You know, I, it probably pisses them off if you say it wrong. But we have bounced you know, I, I'll take the banner. I, we weren't going to win. We weren't going to go to a Final Four. We weren't going to win an NCAA tournament. I'll take the SEC banner in year one, and we're going to build off of that. Although a win there would have really helped. I mean, it, had we won right there, I think we could have jumped up to like high 50s, maybe even 60 program prestige. But getting bounced in the first round, our growth, I think we might grow, but I think it'll be kind of limited. I don't think we'll go back. You know, I don't think we'll lose prestige. But I don't think we're going to grow nearly as much as we could have. Mm, that stings. Let's get through this, see what the Final Four looks like, and then move it on into next season. Ooh, look at Holy Cross doing stuff and things. All right, so in Syracuse, uh, Texas. Oh, look, Nevada got all the way out. St. Mary's also lost to Georgia State. Nevada got all the way out to the Sweet 16. Finally fell to Texas, who just barely squeaked past the Florida Gators. And Texas makes it to the Final Four. In St. Louis. Oh, this simulation's broken. How's Iowa going to beat Louisville? I'm putting in a help desk ticket as we speak. But anyway, in the Elite Eight, the Hawkeyes fall to the Illini of Illinois. In Oklahoma City, NC State. Whoa, beat up on San Diego State. And out in Phoenix. Look at, holy, look at this. Columbia takes out the Wildcats. I take back whatever I said about the simulation being broken. Get out of here, Kentucky. Go home. So, Columbia, you got a 9-5 matchup in the Sweet 16. I don't know how often you get that. The five wins goes on to take the 10-seed Michigan in the Elite Eight. And Holy Cross, Holy Cross, they're in the Final Four. Texas, Illinois, NC State, Holy Cross. Nevada. <laughs> All right. Let's see how this final four. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo! 109 to 100. Somebody forgot to tell them they're allowed to play defense in that game. Uh, let's see how this final four goes, and then we'll we'll move on. There's Miami playing in some also ran tournament. Um. You know, they, they just weren't lucky enough to, to land the right coach, I guess. 
Were they? I, I know we were talking about Holy Cross a lot in one of the prior streams. I couldn't remember if they made the Final Four or not, but if they made the Final Four back to back, that's sick. Like Holy Cross is just—they must have some kind of stud over there. That's ridiculous. Ah, oh, they fell short again. NC State got them. NC State got them. AJ Honeycutt. What was this, Daddy Gerald? It was an old Charlotte 49er, I think, Gerald Honeycutt. All right, Texas and NC State. Chris, your Longhorns, national champions in 2023. All right, guys, let's check out the awards. All right, so nationally, Darnell Holden. Defensive Player of the Year, the MOP, Michael Nelson grabbing all the rest of the awards, and then Shaka Smart, Coach of the Year. First Team All-Americans, there you have it, Ricky Vokshul from Florida. Second Teamers. Quite a bit of Iowa there. Iowa had three Second Team All-Americans. Interesting. All right, now let's go check out, just real quick, uh, the Atlantic Sun Individual Awards. Jake Mitchell. Okay, so I told you I was going to have a, a freshman player of the year in this conference, but I got the wrong one. And I have no idea how, but Jake Mitchell actually won freshman of the year. And I don't remember, I'll have to go back and look at my stream. I honestly don't remember the guy. I don't know if I recruited him or some kind of walk-on or something else, but... Um, Bellarmine did have a freshman of the year. First team all conference. Jake Mitchell's right there. Second teamer, there's Dave Malloy. So that's the one that I called was Dave Malloy. We knew exactly where he was going to end up. Uh, as a freshman, second team all conference. Things are looking up for the Bellarmine Knights. That is for sure. Over to the SEC. All right, yeah, let's do it backwards. Second team all conference. There you go. Arkansas, A&M, Auburn, Bama, and LSU. First teamers. <sighs> Nothing for us. A couple of guys from Kentucky. A bunch of guys from a bunch of teams that we beat down. Uh, but apparently they're better than us. Individual awards. We can't even get coach of the year. We won the daggone tournament. All right, so we get we got shut out. Missouri got nothing. Bellarmine got a lot. Missouri got nothing. No respect. Come on. All right, let's get to this year. I'm really excited to see two things, what this recruiting class was ranked and then how these recruits look as far as uh, just their ratings, stars, all that good stuff. So we're definitely going to take a look at it before, before we sign off for tonight. Still, in my opinion, like, we won the SEC tournament. First of all, that's brilliant, in my opinion. Uh, and then, second of all, like we're gonna go get all the best parts of the stream right now. Like, I always, I like to see the jobs they're gonna offer, even though I'm not gonna take them, in theory. Uh, so we succeeded at everything. We took them 52 to 59, even with the first round bounce. So the first round loss in the NCAAs didn't hold us back. We could have got to the mid-60s had we had a decent tournament if our power forward had not broken his hand. But in year one, we went from 52 to 59. If we can even just stay consistent next year, then it's going to take off like crazy. So I mean, it's, it's going to jump, I promise you. But we're up to 59. That's, I mean, the, the recruiting classes only get better from here. I don't know how else to explain that part of it. All right, so the job offers actually this year are not impressive whatsoever. Not a single job here that I'd consider except, like, if I were still at Bellarmine, Arizona State, Auburn might be somewhat interesting. But, like, kind of surprised. These job offers suck. I was halfway expecting, like, eventually, maybe I would want to coach one of the Blue Blood teams in this. 
like a UNC, UCLA, something like that. I would like to get some time in at Missouri because, like, I think we can get Missouri, like, straight to the top. And I really like them as a school. But I'm, I'm mildly surprised there. But we can go do the UNC, UCLA thing at any time. Like, we're going to be right at the top of the coaching rankings in a handful of years. No rush to get to that point. Staff hiring, we do need to check out. So he's still got a year remaining. Can we extend him? Or wait, do we want to? 82 recruiting. He wants to see if he... Alright, so he doesn't want to... He doesn't want to do an extension. Okay. What is up? Ricky Cupcakes. Usually I'm going to ask better facilities from the AD. <clears throat> I can bounce over and show you recruiting-wise what we actually spent. And see if it's... Um, see if we spent anywhere near our limit. The, the main reason to ask for more money is to be able to pay for better assistant coaches. And we do need to do that eventually. But, oh, yeah, we, oh, probably because we left players on the call list all year. Okay. So we're not going to get a great, uh, actually, it's an opportunity to ask for more money. Because when you spend more of your team budget, you're more likely to get them to give you a little bit of money. So that kind of cuts both ways. Let's see. Um, I can do what we just did with, with the amount of money that we just had. It's not a problem. Upgrade the facilities. Now, they get more money sometimes. The problem is, like, I've had it where I asked for more money, and I went from, like, 250000 to, like, 253000 which to me is totally lame and not worth it. I also had a weird one where I was at, like, two twenty five and I asked for more money, and they sent me straight to three seventy five, like $150,000 extra a year. So, like, it's so all over the place. Like, just give me the facilities. I got to want some lame budget increase. Request approved. Look, there we go. They're going to improve the facilities, so now we're up to B-plus facilities. We're very near the cutting-edge facilities here. Um, we're moving up in prestige, so we're going to... Oh, and we got ranked. So we're just going to have better and better players interested in our school. Yeah, but it's push man. It's push man says yes for more money, more money, and use guerrilla tact, guerrilla tactics to poach five star talent. Uh, I I don't have to poach five star talent. Like first of all, they're going to be interested in us based on our prestige and facilities here real soon. But second of all, like we just built an amazing recruiting class out of three and four star. What? I'm not even going to say that. I'm not sure how good our recruiting class was. Let's watch and see. Let's see what these guys show up on campus looking like. And keep in mind, we did this. <clears throat> this is year one. 52 prestige. Uh, brutal recruiting difficulty. I can't wait to see what these guys show up as. Exactly. If I'm getting $1,000, I would still ask for better facilities. So I can just recruit in state. I mean, you're not holding me back. All right, let's go buy some reports. We only get seventy thousand, so that's definitely the reason that we only had the Great Plains Gold Report Premium Report. The Gold Reports are absolutely a must-have in this year's version. So again, we will go with the Premium Report from the Great Plains, and that's it. We'll eventually have to ask for more money to get better reports and better coaches. And eventually, you know, that can way down the road be a reason that, um, way on down the road that can be a reason to look for a better school that's already got a better, bigger budget, that sort of thing. They're already willing to pay for it. Recruit class rankings. Here we go. So they're going to put that as the number 48 class in the nation. So, I mean, it's top 50. It's not amazing, 
but at the same time, this over uh, it oversamples like they give undue advantage to teams that bring in more players. So if you got a four person or five person recruiting class, you're getting a higher ranking just based off of that. So top fifty with a three man class isn't bad, especially when you consider it was at a school with a fifty two prestige. Uh, what we were at B, maybe B minus facilities. I mean, we're at Missouri basketball. We pulled a top 50 class in year one, and I, I, in my personal opinion, it's better than that. Let's look at the players transferring. Nobody's leaving, so we're going to skip these sessions. Uh, I have absolutely no idea how likely it is to get busted cheating. I've never tried it even once. I've played the college basketball going back to at least 2016, if not longer. I've never a single time ever attempted to bribe anybody in any of my saves. I've always been too scared to press that button. I don't know what it'll do. And so I've just, I, I can't answer that question at all. I don't know. I've never tried it. Not a part of the game that interests me. I, I, I appreciate that it's there, but it's not a part of the game that interests me, so I don't do it. And by the way, I always put uh, integrity sky high. I mean, why not, right? If you're not going to cheat, why not put integrity sky high? I don't know what it affects or what it doesn't affect, but I feel like it's a good thing. All right, here we go. Summer travel. All right, so obviously we were able to recruit at a fairly high level. So I'm going to go to Indy and Houston. Instantly busted you. Did it for science. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. So we can bounce over here. We can see... Wait a minute. Did we get... All right, so we got two open scholarships. And then let's check the draft because we had a handful of seniors. I'm interested if Floyd got drafted. There he is, Gerald, Gerald Floyd, number 30. No other draftees, so we only had the one player that actually got drafted. We can delete all emails. We're on June 26th, and let's see what kind of team we got coming in. What is that? We got a walk-on four-star. Now, see, this is where st stuff starts getting weird. They're gonna try to give me this four-star walk-on point guard. I'm gonna be. A, I'm gonna maintain myself as a Raheem Flanagan fan. He's got decent scoring and decent defensive ability. Coming in at two and a half with a four-star potential. He's gonna be solid. He's gonna get playing time. Uh, this guy. I mean, his ratings look fine. We'll see. He's got even less proficiencies than Flanagan. Uh, and keep in mind, like, they bring him in as a senior walk-on. So, like, Flanagan is definitely my jam. Uh, Tremaine Allen's going to come in looking like a two-star with four-star potential. Outside shooter for Shirley. He's got the sharp shooter trait. I don't think Flanagan had a trait, did he? No. All right, so Tremaine Allen's actually got the sharp shooter trait. I haven't seen very often, but if we get that man the ball, he's going to put it in the little round thing. Uh, we've got a handful of these guys got better. Here's Aaron Smith coming back for his senior year as a four-star guy. And then, of course, the gem of the entire recruiting class, Mike O's, coming in, looking like the best player on the team. Paint dominator. He's got a nine at inside shooting, a six in scoring. He's a dominant rebounder, a and not a great defender, but a great shot blocker. Good steals. He's going to tear it up in that zone. I'm putting my money right here. Conference freshman player of the year. This is going to be a good team. Uh, I don't know that they will be able to produce as well as last year's team did. 
I guess we're going to have to see what Aaron Smith can come in and do. I think he should be solid. Uh, yeah, Tremaine Allen, his scoring is low. So he's a great outside shooter. He's got this sharpshooter attribute. His scoring is low. And what I expect here is that he's he's got a little bit of potential to him. So that scoring is probably going to go up to a 4, maybe even a 5 by the time he leaves. And that's going to be... That's going to be plenty. Like I said, I figured that as about a junior, he would be a perfectly acceptable shooting guard for the level that I expect this team to end up at. Um, as of right now, Mike O's is a perfectly acceptable starter for where I want us to be. Aaron Smith is an acceptable starter for where I want us to be. Uh, Tremaine Allen is too young. Raheem Flanagan is still kind of too young. Uh, Eric Grant is a walk on he's he's not going to get it done so we're going to start flying again we'll let grant back him up we're going to go ahead and just start allen let him start developing um but anyway here is the team that we're going to roll with let's see what kind of goals they've given us here uh same thing 15 games top half of conference qualify for the ncaa so we're going to be able to maintain our job security i don't know that we can maintain or increase prestige this year but another year I mean, last year bought us another year of job security, right? The guys that we brought in are going to build toward it. So even if this year's rocky, next year they'll be fine. So now we can start to add that depth. We can start to add some additional players, and we're going to be good to go. So, guys, that was a fun stream. I had an absolute blast. I hope you all enjoyed it half as much as I did, but i got to cut us off there. Uh, appreciate you all stopping by. I hope you come again next time i don't know if it'll be later on this week this weekend what exactly we'll do i'll try to avoid the ncaa tournament as much as possible uh, and then after that uh push it back out into weekends and whatnot to get people in different time zones but that's it for tonight thanks for stopping by thanks for being here glad that you were able to make it couldn't do it without y'all had a blast and i'll definitely catch you next time